All right, good morning, everyone. I hope you have all signed into Adobe and agreed to terms of service, uh, proper behavior, <laughs> and all of that. Uh, Steve, were you waving at me for anything in particular? Oh, oh OK. Um, so good morning. Um, I believe, are we live and ready to go? Videos up and rocking and rolling, and all systems go. OK, so welcome. Uh, this is the conference, ICANN and Global Internet Governance, The Road to Sao Paulo and Beyond. We are here at the Raffle City Hall Convention Center, in, City Convention Center in Singapore at ICANN 49. Uh, my name is Bill Drake. Uh, I teach at the University of Zurich, and I'm the chair of the Non-Commercial Users Constituency, NCUC, which is the host of this event. Um, and so welcome to you all both people in the room and online. Uh, the, the meeting is being organized with the generous support of ICANN, and we much appreciate their help in this. Uh, just a word on NCUC, uh, in case you don't know, NCUC currently has 337 members from 81 countries, including 94 non-commercial organizations and 243 individuals. We represent civil society uh, actors and interests within the generic name supporting organization of ICANN, the GTLD space. And we have a long-standing interest in such issues as human rights, freedom of expression, privacy, access to knowledge, protecting non-commercial uses and users, development, global internet governance, you name it. Um, so we've been around and in this space for a long time. Anybody who's interested to know more about NCUC, there are little flyers outside in the back. They're geared towards civil society members uh, or potential members in particular, but maybe they're of interest to you. Uh, there's also in the back, uh, if you haven't seen this, this flyer, which uh, is contains the program information. It is a little bit dated, and I will tell you how so in just a moment. Uh, we had some late additions to the program after it was printed. Um, this is the third uh, day-long conference that NCUC has held in recent years. We also did meetings in San Francisco, Toronto. Um, on ICANN and global public interest issues, and we held some workshops in Beijing as well. So this is part of an ongoing stream of activity that we like to engage in uh, to promote cross-community dialogue on ICANN and global public interest issues. Videos of all those past events are available on our website, ncuc.org. This time we made a special effort to facilitate cross-community dialogue by soliciting expressions of interest in participating uh, from people in the community and then reaching out directly uh, and soliciting speakers. And we, I think, as you've seen from the program, managed to get quite a good uh, cross-section of people from across the community. So I'm very, very pleased uh, with that. The goal of the meeting, of course, is to help everyone understand better what's at stake and what's on the agenda at the upcoming Net Mundial Global Multi-Stakeholder Meeting on the Future of Internet Governance that will be held in Sao Paulo, Brazil from 27 and 28, 28 April 2014. As everybody here knows, the meeting was initiated by uh, Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff and ICANN CEO Fadi Chahadi, and is being co-organized by the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee and OneNet Coalition. And the meeting will bring together a wide range of government, business, technical community, civil society, and academic participants from around the world with the declared objective, according to the organizers, of creating internet governance principles and proposing a roadmap for the future evolution of the internet governance ecosystem. That sounds quite a heroic task for a meeting. Um, but it will, so it will be a very interesting event. The purpose of this NCUC conference is to provide a first opportunity for intensive face-to-face cross-community dialogue on the main substantive issues that will be likely to be addressed in Sao Paulo. There will be other events during this week. Well, I imagine we'll be talking about internet governance in Sao Paulo all week. Um, and there will be other events during this week, most notably the two meetings being held by the cross-community working group on internet governance which is the community's chief mechanism for addressing these issues. Um, I just want to uh, make a, pre a brief note of thanks to some of the people who helped to make this happen, most notably Fadi Chahadi and David Olive and their senior staff for their support, uh, Nancy Lupino and her team uh, for making the conference logistics and remote participation happen. Uh, special uh, thanks to Ergis Ramaj, who helped uh, work with me throughout this whole process from start to finish. And, learn to put, to put up with uh, civil society people and uh, the, the complexities that we bring. Um, and within NCUC, special thanks also 
to my colleagues Steffi Milan and Brent, Brendan Kerbis for working on the website, and to Jolie McPhee, who's not with us, he's in New York City, but he's making the live webcasting happen via YouTube. So we hope to have remote, uh, uh, robust remote participation by the wider internet governance community, not just those who are able to come to ICANN meetings, in particular Singapore. We also solicited written inputs, by the way. Uh, members of the ICANN community were invited to provide personal or organizational written inputs related to the four panel topics indica indicated on the conference program. And these were added to an online repository um, on the website that's asso associated with each of the panels. I don't know if you can see the website, but at the end of each panel, there's a, a link where you can go and see various NetMundial inputs that people provided and some other materials, some of which were written uh, for this meeting uh, by various actors uh, to try to help frame the discussion. So hopefully we'll be able to refer to some of those as we go along. Um, a brief uh, overview of the program. Uh, we'll start with an opening benediction from Steve Crocker, who needs very little in an introduction here. Um, and then uh, Sally Costerton, a senior advisor to the president uh, for stakeholder relations, who's been very involved in the planning of Sao Paulo, will give us an update on what's going on. And I understand that the, our Brazilian colleague is also here, uh, Daniel, so we can get a two for one on that. Then we'll go into four panels. Uh, and these panels, the first panel is a broad setting the scene kind of panel just to get people started by getting a bunch of ideas out on the table about what have been some of the most important initiatives in the past few months and some of the most important ideas that have been put on the table through all these various strategy panels, cross-community working group, uh, OneNet, all the other kinds of multiple initiatives that are in the wind right now to try to help generate input into the Net Mondial process and also work beyond them in some cases. So that first panel will uh, take that task on and it will be moderated by Rafik Damek, who's the chair of the non-commercial stakeholder group, NCSG, and co-facilitator of the cross-community working group on internet governance. Um, and you can see the full list of speakers um, on the website. Um, on the program here, I, there, there's some amendments as I said. I will note those as I go. The next, we'll have lunch, and then the next panel will be on internet governance principles. Again, one of the major objectives of the Net One Deal is supposed to be to adopt a set of global principles for internet governance, and that's been a, a subject of some concern, exactly what those principles might be. We have a very uh, good panel there as well. I just want to note on the program, it says that George Sadowski is on that panel. He has, because of the conflict with the board schedule, been moved to a later session. And we have added uh, Yari Akro, the, the head of the IETF, uh, to the program. So Yari's here, and we're very happy to have him. Um, the panel after that um, will be on a roadmap for ecosystem evolution and the whole issue of globalization, a rather timely topic, globalization of IANA function and ICANN more generally. And uh, added to the, the panel, since this was printed, um, unfortunately, again, um, just a little bit out of sync, uh, is Paul Wilson, the Director General of APNIC uh, from, from the ASO. Um, then we'll have a coffee break. And then finally, the last panel, Roadmap for Ecosystem Evolution, Institutional Innovation. I will, oh, I'm sorry, I should have said that um, the principles panel will be moderated by Adam Peake, and the globalization panel will be moderated by Avi Doria, both of NCUC. Um, the last panel uh, will be on institutional innovation that will be uh, moderated by myself. Um, and George Sadowski has been added to that panel. That's not reflected on here. Finally, then we will have a keynote address by the man of the hour, <laughs> uh, Larry Strickling, uh, um, who's the Assistant Secretary of Commerce for the US government and has recently had some very interesting and important things to say uh, that has animated the global internet community uh, quite a bit. So we're really pleased that Larry could be with us and uh, share his thoughts. And then we'll have some con brief concluding observations from a few people from NCUC, particularly we put a, a couple of our newbie members because NCUC has been growing very rapidly and we're bringing in a lot of people from outside of the ICANN sphere who have been involved in broader global internet governance issues in other environments such as the United Nations and so on. And so we will have Prana, uh, Pranesh Prakesh and Stefania Milan, two colleagues who are now on the executive committee of the NCUC. And, and we will close with Robin Gross, uh, who is uh, familiar to all of you and one of the 
longtime stalwarts of the NCUC. And then we have a reception, uh, the most important part. Uh, and Fadi Chahadi will be here for that. He's flying in a little bit later. So that's the of the day. Uh, I think it should be a very interesting uh, and robust discussion. Really happy to have such a full room here. And I see some people are online as well, despite the time zone differences. I think that's fantastic. And so uh, without any further ado, as they say, I'd like to welcome to the, to the podium um, Steve Crocker. Steve is, of course, the chair of the board of ICANN and somebody who's got a very long standing and deep involvement with these issues. Do you want to just stand in the front, Steve, and talk? Or how do you want to, would you like to sit down? We don't have a podium, but we're working on that. You would need a bike, and I think there is a roving mic here, which I guess can give you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? It's an, is, I guess I have to. Uh, there we go. Um, so I'm electing to do this um, without the protection of a podium to stand behind or uh, sitting down behind the uh, screen here. And I have scribbled a few notes, so I apologize for the uh, uh, stagecraft here. Um, it, it, I'm, I'm actually bowled over. Um, most of the interactions I've had with NCUC have been with the leadership, and I've always wondered, uh, the, the leadership has been so active and forceful that I've sometimes wondered if, if how much was behind and involved as well. So it's a pleasure to see uh, so many people here. This is, this is great. Um, and, and particularly, I'm also, I could feel the energy in the room as I came in. Uh, Benediction. I don't know what a benediction is exactly. You're not going to get any benediction from me. I'm just going to, to chat for a bit. Um, there's a lot happening here. Uh, my, uh, my sense as I was looking at the program and listening to Bill reminded me of my reaction when I go to a new restaurant. Uh, and one of the criteria I use for judging uh, how well I like the restaurant is whether or not there's enough choices on the menu that appeal to me that I can't possibly get to them all in one visit so that uh, if there's another set of things that I might be interested in sampling and want to come back, that's a good thing. And that is exactly the feeling I had coming in here, that the set of topics that are meaty and relevant and timely uh, is more than, one, uh, more than one meal, if you will. Um, there's an awful lot of buzz, of course, about uh, the announcement from NTIA about the transition of their role with respect to the IANA uh, process. And let me set that slightly in context, at least from my perspective. Um, it's been a, a pretty fantastic year uh, with a lot of things going on. And I want to divide it up into uh, very crisply three, uh, three areas, all of which have a degree of globalization in their, uh, in their concept. And uh, in my uh, very simple-minded uh, picture of how they're organized, these are almost in concentric circles. So from the inside, uh, we have the IANA globalization and the transition that uh, Larry uh, referred to in his announcement. Uh, that will garner an awful lot of attention, quite obviously. Um, but it's just one of the of the three uh, broad areas of globalization. Uh, I want to say quite a bit more about that, uh, but uh, and it will be interesting because it's uncoordinated with with anybody else, and so I hope I don't um, run counter to what Larry's going to say later. Um, the second big area is ICANN globalization, which I want to distinguish from the IANA globalization. The Globalization of ICANN has been underway. You've heard and seen the announcements of uh, um, hubs, one of which is right here in Singapore, uh, breaking up the headquarters into what we call tri-quarters uh, and uh, regional engagements and a, a number of other initiatives. Sally, I expect you're going to say a bit more about all that, perhaps. Um, and the third is the things that don't necessarily involve ICANN directly, uh, internet governance writ large, 
the meeting next month in Brazil is a key piece, but not the sole piece of that dialogue, OneNet and others. Um, the, um, the natural focus, it seems to me, for NCUC is uh, certainly with respect to ICANN globalization, uh, certainly with respect to broader sets of issues in internet governance uh, writ large, and in particular with respect to uh, public responsibility. And uh, I'll draw your attention to one of the four panels, the one headed by Nee Quainer on um, uh, public responsibility that uh, just recently concluded as potentially helpful in kicking off that dialogue. I'll come back, as I said, to the uh, NTI announcement. Uh, I've been watching uh, the dialogue online in various mailing lists, and it uh, ranges over a considerable set of ideas. Um, my preference is that we stay focused uh, more toward the minimal end of things. This is a natural progression that was anticipated uh, even from the formation of ICANN. Uh, there is uh, language in the original documents that anticipated the step that is taking place now to have happened in 2000, which is almost before the lifetime of many of the people who come here. Um, I would counsel that we should be looking for minimal changes as opposed to maximal changes, that um, we should be focused in trying to identify what are the issues that have to be addressed, what are the principles that have to be preserved, and then stay grounded in specifics um, as opposed to using this as an opportunity for re reorganizing the world uh, completely or reorganizing ICANN completely. Um, I'm particularly, as I said, interested in uh, principles and issues in order to be able to evaluate uh, and, and sort out what the role of various solutions that are proposed. There's a tendency to uh, jump forward and say, well, let's do this or let's do that. And the natural question, it seems to me, is, and that accomplishes what? So uh, either after the fact of having pr uh, solutions proposed or preferably before, let's see if we can focus on exactly what is the problem that has to be solved and uh, what, is a, what are the uh, major principles and, and uh, uh, framework that we need to, to uh, preserve. Uh, the the absolutely important aspect of the announcement uh, last week, last week, it was last week, uh, it's hard to keep track of time, is that it is not a signal that things are broken and need to be fixed, but exactly the opposite, that things have been working and that it's time to release a piece of the scaffolding that has been in place uh, from the beginning. So with that, I will uh, step aside. I apologize that I can't be here for the entire session, but I will be attentive to hearing uh, what the major pieces of dialogue are, and, uh, and, and hopefully there won't be any great explosions. But I do expect that there will be quite a bit of, of energy uh, to, to borrow from physics. Let's hope that energy turns into light mostly instead of heat. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, I guess it depends on what your threshold is for a great explosion.